Immersion. So this spring I'm going to be building a few more mini quads. Uh, previously I've used the Immersion RC video system for my previous quads, um, which is heavy and fairly expensive. Um, so for my new builds, I'm electing to use these much smaller, much lighter, and much cheaper video transmitters, uh, which come in a wide variety of brands and power outputs. This one's 200 uh, milliwatt. Uh, this one's 600 milliwatt. This one's 25 milliwatt. And I have more than this. I have uh, a few more in my in my drawer um, because they're so cheap. Uh, I figured you know, why not buy a bunch, and you know, I can have a lot more quads this year, um, and I can uh, you know swap them as needed. Uh, depending on what I'm doing with the quad and also if I'm racing with others I'll probably use the race band uh, 200 milliwatt if I'm by myself in a large field You know I might use a 600 milliwatt and if I'm racing indoors the 25 milliwatt I've actually raced indoors previously a few times and You know with a 600 milliwatt transmitter and it was just terrible because you'd have a lot of um, Reflections off the walls, so I bought a whole bunch of those um, in the fall so that this year I would have them uh, so the question that I have is how much power filtering is required to ensure that I don't get noise in my video transmission. Now, previously the Immersion RC video system had this built in. Um, it worked reasonably well. I think sometimes on uh, major punches I could see a little bit of noise, but for the most part it was fine. Uh, and they, they sold these to go along with it, which is essentially just um, a capacitor and a lot of weight, uh, which you could... You know, if you wanted a capacitor, you could have just put that in there for much cheaper and much less weight, and it didn't really do much, so uh, I guess not really needed. Um, but this time, I'm going to use these very small switching backs, probably this one. This should be enough. Um, it weighs about a gram, uh, and it can take the main pack voltage down to whatever voltage I want, because built into it is a little screw which changes the voltage output so if i want five volts i can have five volts if i want 12 volts i can have 12 volts uh, which is quite nice um, i think these are about a dollar a piece especially if you buy them in bulk you know maybe 75 50 cents so they're really cheap so you know you can, ha can never have enough i got a uh, little you know, bag full of them um previously on my larger quads i used a video filtering like this which was uh you know 40 volt s back um, I have a U back here, which I'm not sure where I pulled that from, but I, I used I used that at one point in time. Fire cores, uh, you build your own inductors, um, and recently I purchased a few of these just to try them out. Again, don't know if they're necessary or not, but I figured I'd give them a try. Uh, this is a thousand microfarad capacitor and an inductor, um, which this is basically built and designed as a video filter. Um, and I've also bought these low ES, ESR uh, 1000 microfarad capacitors, um, which I'd also like to try out. Uh, Alright, so in order to test this out, I've assembled a few common household items. Uh, one being a test breadboard, which has all the various components on it, which I can move around as needed in order to test the various uh, filtering options. Um, in order to measure that, I have a 1000 megahertz oscilloscope which I can use to see the noise um, in the voltage uh, as it's going to the video system. Um, I have an RC benchmark dynamometer, which is fully scriptable, um, and I've written some code for it, which will generate as much motor noise as possible. Um, it is actually quite ridiculous. It changes the motor speeds sometimes from minimum to maximum 10 times per second. Um, and in my first few tests, this running for 15 seconds um, almost burnt out the motor. I could actually smell it to start uh, burning out. Um, so it is quite uh, devastating uh, to watch. Um, this motor is an RCX uh, 2350 kV motor. Um, I think I got it for about $9, so you know, if I did burn it out for science, it's not a big deal. And I have a little BESC. Um, because everything I've read says that this has the largest motor noise be, uh, when it's using active braking, which is enabled on this. All right, so for the first test, I have the forest battery connected up to the system, and I have the oscilloscope connected directly to the main uh, power feed so that I can see the raw noise that's coming from the motors. Um, this is without any filtering whatsoever. Um, I don't know how easy it is to see this, but... 
Oh, that's actually not a bad view. Um, uh, I have this teared in the center at roughly 17 volts. Um, every line here represents 5 volts. So this is plus 5, plus 10 from uh, 17 volts, and this is minus 5, minus 10. So this should give you roughly an idea of uh, what the noise is doing uh, to the power system when this runs. So, let me run it. Run, start. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, that's pretty hot. Um, so, you know, I saw lines that uh, was bursting what looked to be at least 10 volts um, above and at least 10 volts below. Uh, that was an extraordinary amount of noise. Um, and I've heard people complaining that these little BSCs have actually been frying their video equipment. And that might explain why. Uh, those voltage surges are quite high. Um, so that could blow a few components, maybe. Uh, uh, that's amazing. Okay, so I've let these motors cool off a lot. I think I'm very lucky that this is uh, an aluminum plate here. It actually absorbs a lot of heat. Um, and what I've done is I've added this um, thousand microfarad capacitor into uh, I guess, you know the raw voltage itself. So this would be the same thing as putting it next to the battery or or putting it on. Uh, on your power harness um, just to see how this smooths out the voltage if it does at all. Let's run this. That actually did quite a bit. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but um, you know there was dips in voltages, obviously, which you'd expect to see. But the line itself, the amount of noise that you see, didn't really increase that much. Um, so you didn't see sharp spikes up, sharp spikes down. You just saw the line move down. Uh, I want to see that again. Let's see that again. I'll move up close. Um, yeah, so actually that worked amazingly. Um, for 1.7 grams, it removed almost all motor noise um, and smoothed out the power system tremendously. Uh, I think no matter what additional filtering I may do, I'm going to put this on uh, all my quads from this point forward. Um, that noise that you see is not good on anything. So for this third test, I have replaced the low ACR capacitor with a standard capacitor, standard ceramic capacitor, and an inductor, um, a little LED on there, so uh, maybe there's other things going on here. I haven't really looked at the board below it too much. Um, but this is something that's designed for filtering power for FPV. Um, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how this does uh, in comparison to just using a cheap uh, low ACR capacitor. And here we go. Okay, so that looked fairly similar, I think, um, to just using the capacitor. So uh, I don't think that really gave any more benefit than the just using um, 1000 megafarad uh, capacitor. Okay, so after those tests, I was curious if a low ESR capacitor is actually required or if we could get away with any 1000 microfarad capacitor. Um, 
I actually didn't have one lying around, but I did find an old wall charger that had two. So I extracted them, and uh, you can see uh, one next to the uh, low ESR capacitor. So it is smaller, slightly. Um, I've connected one into the circuit, and now we can test to see if it makes a significant difference. Or any difference. Yeah, that actually um, that helped, but there was a lot more noise with this capacitor than with the low ESR capacitor. Uh, with low ESR capacitor, there wasn't a lot of noise. Um, you can see the voltage drop. There was some, but you know this was at least double. Okay, so how about we add more capacitors? We have two, may as well. All right, so you don't have a uh, low ESR capacitor, but you do have two capacitors, or you have a single 2000 microfarad capacitor. Um, will that be enough? Will it make a difference? Let's see. Okay, so I'm not even sure if that made a difference from a single one. Um, yeah, that was still fairly noisy. Again, better than raw power, but there's still a lot of noise in there. Um, so I guess an inductor and a regular capacitor, because this is a 1,000 microfarad capacitor. So uh, an inductor paired with a 1,000 microfarad capacitor, regular one, is fine. Two capacitors is not good enough. Okay, so I have uh, this next test set up so that the voltage regulator is in place and all the video equipment is now hooked into it. So we have the video transmitter, which runs from seven to 24 volts, and we have the camera, which is actually pointed at the oscilloscope, um, which runs from uh, nine to 12 volts. So the regulator is set for 10 volts. And what's important is that the regulator is set below the minimum your pack voltage will ever get. The reason for this is it will lower voltage you know, if it's 16 voltage, it'll go to 10 volts. If it's 12 volts, it'll go to 10 volts. If it's 9 volts, it will stay at 9 volts. It won't boost the power up. So if your pack voltage goes down to 9 volts, and it is um, you know very noisy, that noise will stay there because it's not going to do anything to that uh, to that voltage. And obviously, you know, it, it, um, that 4s it's never going to get down to 10 volts. Uh, even 3s, you don't want it to get down to 10 volts, but if 3S has noise, it may dip below 10 volts. So it's possible that that may get reflected. Um, or this thing could be completely noisy in general. Uh, so let's see. Oh, uh, what's important to note is I have it actually transmitting video into the goggles. I know it's hard to see. Uh, I will actually record this because there's a DVR built in so that we can review what this actually looks like. And start. Okay. Um, so there's definitely some noise in there. Um, it doesn't seem to be spiking at all, uh, but it does seem to be dipping. I wonder if that's because the voltage is dipping below 10 volts intermittently, um, which would be amazing because that's from 16 down to 10 volts, so I guess under load it would be less than that. Uh, I guess that makes sense because we were seeing 5 volt dips, 5 10 volt dips, so um, you know we're seeing the noise reflected below uh, what the regulator can do. Um, so the regulator seems to be working fine because I didn't see any above the line, but uh, we're definitely seeing those below noise below the line. Okay, so for the next test, I'm going to duplicate the previous test, except this time I've added in the 1000 microfarad capacitor. Now, what I hope to see is the capacitor doing its job and smoothing out the main voltage um, that is feeding the uh, the voltage regulator. 
um, to the point where there is no way that it will actually get um, below 10 volts and the regulator will do its job and keep the voltage at 10 volts because it'll always be above 10 volts and it'll, it'll dip a bit on the main line as we saw in the uh, in the capacitor test but hopefully it can handle that uh, without any issue um, there's one way to find out Um, amazing. I didn't, uh, you couldn't even tell that the motors were running. That worked phenomenally. Um, so it looks like the best combination, if you're going to use, um, a voltage regulator is to uh, pair that with a thousand microfarad low ASR capacitor um, which totals about three grams and it will reduce the line noise to basically nothing even um, you know running an extremely aggressive uh, test on little BESCs which are prone to be extremely noisy so yeah I'm actually quite happy with that test and that is what I'll be flying with. So, um, it looks like two capacitors is not necessarily better than one. Uh, a capacitor, which this is a thousand microfarad capacitor, paired with an inductor is good. It's definitely better than one. So, I guess for the weight, it is better to have this thing if you don't have a low ESR capacitor. But the winner here is the low ESR capacitor, primarily because it is cheaper, it weighs less, um, you know, it did uh, roughly the same job, I'd say, as the capacitor paired with an inductor. So, I would definitely use this, and I plan to, a lot of them.